Article 41, we the undersigned residents and registered voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, petitioned the Board of Selectmen to place on the warrant for the 2017 annual town meeting the following article. Shall the town of Hampton vote in accordance with the provisions of RSA 32-15 to abolish the Budget Committee, a.k.a. the Municipal Budget Committee, and to rescind the town's prior acceptance of RSA 32 to that extent, majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Before I go out for a motion to open discussion on Article 41, I offer this challenge. This article should be discussed without any reference to individuals or personalities. That's my challenge to all of you here. Many of you have served on the committee. Many of you have strong opinions about it. I went to the Lane Library the other night to try to do a little research to see how long have we had a municipal budget committee, and I got to about 1934, um, but I'm sure 53. So my point is, all the people who served on that committee are probably no longer with us. This is an issue, in my opinion, about process and not about the people who may occupy the positions on that committee at this time, last year, on the ballot next year. So that's my challenge. Um, we have a rule at the beginning that we announced that we were not going to be attacking anyone. Personally, I'd revoke uh, recognition of the speaker. So in that spirit, I'll take a motion to open discussion on Article 41. Do I have a motion? Moved by Mr. Uh, moved by Mr. Nyan. Uh, do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Ross. Um, Mr. Nyan, Article 41. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Nyan, and I speak uh, on this article as a resident of the town of Hampton. Um, I would like to offer an amendment. It's a technicality, uh, but I think it's an important one. Yep. To amend the warrant article 41, replacing RSA 32 colon 15 with RSA 32 colon 14. Do I have a second on the Nyan um, amendment? Seconded by Mr. Emmerich. And I understand it is a, uh, is a typo. Uh, looked at both sections. And this is, this, this is 14 is the section that would entertain um, revocation of a budget committee. So all those in favor of the Nyan amendment, if you could raise your voter card, down cards, uh, any opposed? All right, so that gets us squared away on um, what we're dealing with, RSA 32 colon 14. Mr. Zanoy. I pledge no names here. Thank you. Jerry Zanoy, 16 presidential says, I'm against this article. I've spent three years as a selectman and three years on the budget committee. And I think tension is good. Tension is very good between the two of them. You have a backstop on the budget committee and it overlooks the presented budget. And if done correctly, it's a good backstop. I think the, uh, what was it, last year or the year before, there was a warrant article that reduced the number of uh, vote elected members to five, uh, six. I think when that happens, that's going to be good. It'll cut down a lot of noise and people talking over people and people interrupting and that kind of stuff. So I think when we get down to six, I'm not on the committee right now, but when we get down to six people, we'll have less noise. And now we look for the right candidates, good quality orientated candidates one who do the analysis line by line, look at previous year's spending, look at what they're asking for, make rational statements and, why, and, and arguments as to why the cost should be so high or maybe even be increased or whatever, and do it in the right atmosphere. So I, I, I'm against abolishing them. I think that the reduction of them from 12 to 6 is a good, num a good thing to do, and then we've got to elect the right people who will do the work. You have to do the work. I don't need to listen to sentiments and opinions. You have to do the work. There's 420 to 430 line items on the budget. And when I was on the budget committee, I looked at it, every single one of them, the previous five years worth of spending, what they were asking for, and then offer rationale in terms of an argument why it should be lower or higher. That's what needs to be done by those people participating on the budget committee. Opinions and sediment, I don't give much weight to. But I think we should keep the budget committee 
and as it gets down to six people, get the right people in there, and let's go to work. And work together with the Board of Selectmen. Improve our interpersonal relationships both ways, and get on with the business at hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Zanoy. Ms. Wolsey. First of all, Mr. Moderator, I inadvertently misinformed you. It was 1954 that the town of Hampton voted to come under the Municipal Budget Act. Uh, number one, I think it's presumptuous for a sitting elected board, specifically the Board of Selectmen, to take a, to make a recommendation on what should happen to another board, committee, or commission in this community. Uh, number two, the Budget Committee performs a very important function. If you don't like uh, people getting excited, uh, that's too bad, that's part of the process. But you will be very, very poorly served should you choose to go along with this article. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Ms. Wapp. Brian Lapham, 27 I Street. Um, I am totally not in favor of this article. I'm coming on my ninth year on the Budget Committee. Um, the important thing about the Budget Committee is it's a backup. And by that I mean that we go through every single line item. We get down to the penny. And yes, because some of us are a little passionate, it can be a little TV show. But it, I just can't see not having a budget committee. Um, we put a lot of work into this, and I mean a lot of work. And for the amount of money that we get paid, um, it's a lot of time consumed. But again, I say that we're a passionate group. We are trying to look out for your money and we will protect it in any way we possibly can. So please, don't follow this, because we need the Budget Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lapham. Um, Mr. Kravitz and Mr. Rice. Uh, just a few common sense points. Board of Selectmen's main job is to hire the town manager, right? Town manager make some recommendation on the budget. And what I hear when, they, when you're discussing them is, great job. The budget committee has a different function. The members of the budget committee have representatives from the school, representatives from the beach, and actually there's another one, but I forget. The point is, the people on the budget committee, most many of them are Oh, there's a rep from the Board of Selectmen. Most of them have been involved in politics in the town for a long time. They know where the, where the problems are. They look at a budget. Best example was signing a state contract for gas. When gas was high, we were overpaying. Budget committee pointed out you can buy it a lot less. So the, budget, so the Board of Selectmen got a credit card that the town employees can use and save 40 some odd thousand dollars. It makes sense to have people on the budget committee who represent the whole town. Oftentimes, people on the Board of Selectmen have an agenda. They both serve a function. It'd be a shame to lose a budget committee because you'd be losing a lot of value to the town. Thank you, Mr. Kravitz. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, having served as both a member and a chairman of the Board of Selectmen and a member and a chairman of the Budget Committee, and having served on the county budget review committees several times, uh, I rise in support of this warrant article. I don't think it has a thing to do with how hard you work, how much time you spend, or how spirited the discussions are. That's not an issue to here today at all. 
The point is, does the Budget Committee, as it is currently formulated and currently composed, does it now and has it for a number of years perform the, bud the function which it is supposed to perform? And I would submit to you that it does not and has not. The, the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen have been at odds for a number of years in this town, something that has been totally unnecessary. There's always this admission, well, we know that the Budget, that the Board of Selectmen uh, set policy and all we do is, is follow that. No. The Budget, the, the Board of Selectmen determines what the policies of the town will be. They determine whether we will, shall do something, whether we should buy something, whether their departments should have something, whether they should do certain functions, etc., etc., etc. That's your job as the fiduciary heads of the, of the town. When you come forward, <clears throat> excuse me, with a proposed amount for that budget, the Budget Committee's sole job, their only job, is to determine whether the amount that you have proposed for it is reasonable and appropriate. That is their only function. <clears throat> they are not supposed to be talking about whether we should have it or not. That's policy and that's the, budget, the Board of Selectmen's job. Is it appropriate? Are we paying too much or too little for it? Uh, we get into too many, we have seen over recent years, too many philosophical discussions on these things. And I think a lot of them have been a phenomenal waste of time. I think the Budget Committee has spent probably twice as much time in session as they should have. I serve on the, I've served on, on reviewing county budgets for the last uh, six years. And those things come in, the numbers are presented, the rationale behind them is presented, they are discussed briefly, and if there is a, something wrong with an item, it is brought up, it is discussed, similar to what we're doing here today, and we move on. But here we see endless, endless discussions that go on into how many angels you can fit on the head of a pin as to whether we're going to add or subtract cents to the tax rate or dollars to the overall budget. An absolute waste of time. We've seen budget committee sessions. Well, there are two ways you can achieve the budget that you want. One is, as re was referred to earlier, scrutiny line item by line item by line item. By definition, when you do that, if you can add, when you get to the bottom, that is your budget, period because you have said each individual thing is reasonable and appropriate, we've discussed it and examined it and so forth. There's another way to do that, and it was done by the gentleman who preceded me as the, as the uh, Budget Committee Chair, Jim Tierney. And we tried a different, slightly different approach that year. How much of an increase in the total tax rate will you tolerate? And, the, and the, the, that was given uh, to the Budget Committee, and he said, okay, if you will stay within that amount, I think it was like a 2% or something like that, or some small amount of increase, if you'll stay within that, we will review these things so we're familiar with what they are, but we will not go in and do the detailed scrutiny because you have met our overall uh, requirement of not exceeding that amount and saving money for the taxpayers. Those are the two options to do this. But one thing that you cannot do that we have seen done several times in recent years is to go down through line by line by line by line by line and then all of a sudden when you get to that figure at the bottom arbitrarily say, I'm going to take 10% off. To me, that is insanity. That is not fair to the Board of Selectmen and is not fair to our department chiefs or anyone else. The other thing that has come in, and this is going to come up on a separate warrant article, which can be discussed later, but something that has come in is that the Budget Committee has inserted the default budget as a negotiating point when considering the budget. That is not their job. Their job is to review the, the appropriations to make sure that they are, they are the appropriate amount and well, that the money is well spent. They're not supposed to play a game to negotiate to see if we can get down to the lowest point by any perverse mechanism that we can possibly come up with. That's not their job. 
What we have seen in recent years is that we negotiate with the the default budget is nothing but a mathematical calculation. It is the result if something else happens. It's not supposed to be part of this process. But our budget committees have been doing that, and by doing so, they have been distorting the process. I'm big on process. If you can preserve the process and keep it pure and keep it appropriate and keep it to the letter, then it doesn't really matter who occupies the positions. Unfortunately, over the last 10 or a dozen years, that process has been diverted, perverted, changed, modified, stretched, and everything else. And it does not resemble the strict guidance that a budget committee should be doing. Now, one thing that, that maybe isn't realized, when you put that default budget in there, you require once the budget is different than what the budget committee may have approved, if you come up with the, with the default budget through these machinations, you require the Board of Selectmen, the town manager, and all the department heads to go back and reformulate the entire budget. They gave you something that was balanced. You took something out of one side of it, so now it's unbalanced again, and they've got to go back and do it all over again. This is a waste of manpower which we cannot afford in a town like this. We complain about uh, whether uh, salaries and, and uh, department costs are appropriate or not, and then the Budget Committee, by its, its own very own actions, contributes to the wasted time and effort. So I would submit to you that we should eliminate the Budget Committee and fully expect that next year we will reintroduce a Charter Commission. The last time this was done, no, we got to stop you right there. I'll let you wind up here. You've okay. uh, made your pitch for this article. And, okay. I've uh, given you a lot of time, so I appreciate it. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for your uh, remarks. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Mike Pierce, 84 Lock Road. I've been on the Budget Committee off and on since 19, uh, 2004. And I think that the Budget Committee serves several good purposes. One is when the selectmen present a budget and we, the budget committee, thinks they're spending too much money in one spot or another, it's our job to point that out and vice versa. I, I know we've increased the budget before and when we needed to fire, hire some firemen, we did that. So it's not always up or down, uh, always down, it's sometimes it's up or down. So we won't get into that part, but my concern is when we present the budget, we should be able to check it thoroughly from one end to the other. And Mr. Rice was talking about the default budget. Well, the default budget is last year's budget plus the legal requirements if it's used for the budget this year. That's, there's no reason not to compare it. When you're buying a car, wouldn't you want to compare a Chevrolet to a Ford or a Toyota to a, a Nissan? I mean, that's just normal way you do business to compare. That's, it's nothing different than looking at last year's budget and comparing it to what they're asking for this year. The default budget has just a little bit more in it, what's required by law to be last year's budget plus whatever they need to operate in the next year. So that remark about the default budget is, in my opinion, is not merited because it's a handy tool to have at your fingertips like you're comparing cars and so forth. So I enjoy looking through the budget. I enjoy going through and making sure we're spending money correctly. And when it comes to some adverse conversations or relationship between the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, to me that's somewhat normal because they want money. The Budget Committee's job is to watch out for the taxpayers' money, therefore trying to keep it, the spending under control. So there's somewhat of a normal adverse relationship there, even the way it, just because of the way it works. And I think that's good because you have a check and balance. If you have five people looking at a budget request and then you have a number more, six or at least looking at the budget again, you got that many more eyes looking at things. And in theory, you might catch something that somebody else might have missed. We've had a couple of those instances this year. Talking about the default budget, there were some errors in the default budget that we pointed out to the Board of Selectmen. And when it comes to the budget itself, there's things that can always be adjusted or they hadn't considered possibly all the angles that we, might, that we may have seen from the Budget Committee angle. So I'm not running again for Budget Committee, so a lot of people say that's great, but I think it's a necessary thing to have in town. 
you need to have the check and balance. It's like having all these checks on the town. You have an auditor to make sure we're spending money correctly overall. You have banks have audits. And we have checks on the federal government to see what they're doing to your tax dollars. I think it's a good check to have in place, and I'm all for it because not only have I been there, but I've been a selectman, and I've been a budget committee member, and when I walk in the budget committee, I put on my budget committee hat and take off of whatever hat I had before. That's the spirit of a budget committee, to look out for the taxpayers. We are the taxpayers' representatives when it comes to watching the bill vote. Nobody else is. Okay, that's my support of the budget committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Ms. Latimer. By your instructions, Mr. Moderator, I'm going to take all personalities out of this. And if you would indulge me, I would like to read a um, brief article from the basic law of budgeting put out by an HMA, which I think encompasses a lot of the pros and cons to the continuation of the Budget Committee. This is put out to cities and towns basically as a manual. And the piece I'm going to read you comes from a, Supreme, a New Hampshire Supreme Court decision. So again, not to be redundant, it leaves all personalities out of this conversation. According to RSA 32 colon 1, the purpose of the Budget Committee is to assist voters in prudent appropriation of public funds. The New Hampshire Supreme Court in Hecker versus McKiernan 105, New Hampshire 195, dated 1963, has said the purpose of the Municipal Budget Committee law is this, to provide a committee with special knowledge to oversee and analyze the expenditures of various town departments and districts. In this manner, the electorate, which is the voters, would ordinarily be without this detailed knowledge necessary to vote intelligently on certain budgetary problems, and that they be given sufficient information to determine the annual amounts necessary to properly manage town affairs. Since all departments naturally tend to want more money in order to better perform the functions they are charged with, the budget committee becomes an arbiter, given power by the legislature to reconcile these appropriation requests to maintain the tax load within manageable proportions. The relationship between the budget committee and the governing body create some natural tension. The system is designed to ensure that more than one set of minds considers the issues. The Budget Committee can second guess the governing body by voting to propose amounts for various purpose, purposes that are higher or lower than the budgeted amount process. <coughs> A little debate and disagreement is normal in the budget process, but local officials, and this is, I think, on a part where many have failed. Uh, lost my place, sorry. Local officials should conduct these proceedings with civility and respect. In the heat of the process, it can be easily easy to get caught up in who's in charge and who is right. When it is really important, however, that in a good result, if a good result is to be reached for the community, in the end, the voters are the ones who will decide the budget will be. Ultimately, the citizens are the beneficiaries only when the governing body and the budget committee members carry out their representative responsibilities without taking criticism personally and present voters with good faith recommendations from which to approve the budget. I think as long as we have government, 
we will have those that we support governing us and those who we don't. And that's why we have a process by which we can elect others to participate and represent us. What is important here is that you are, if you vote for this article, you are in fact diminishing the information that goes out to the general public by taking yet away one more layer. I leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. I'm going to go to Mr. Jones, who has not spoken on this article, and I'm going to go to Ms. Woolsey, and I'm going to see if we've had enough information on this um, topic. Uh, we've had pro, we've had con. Um, we're going to have Mr. Jones, Ms. Woolsey, and then we're going to have a vote as to whether we're all set to move on. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Ms. Marlin. Isn't it interesting that the reported petitioner is not speaking? Or is he? Maybe the reported petitioner is not the actual petitioner, but someone else. It is noteworthy that the all five of the Board of Selectmen members signed this petition. It is also noteworthy that if you remove the Budget Committee by supporting this, this warrant article, that they will greatly enhance their power reasonable to say that this is nothing more than a power play, absolute, pure, and simple power play. And it's not taking power away from the Budget Committee. No, no. <laughs> we have precious little as it is, because our power is really to advise, as Ms. Latimer just said, she just read, um, I want to say 32.1, what the Budget Committee is about. We're basically to advise. Now, all this noise you've been hearing about the contention and the arguments between the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, think about it for, for a minute. Look at all of the Warren articles. The Budget Committee supported every one, except the one, and that was a tie vote. <coughs> so where is the dispute? The dispute is actually they don't like one simple fact of the Budget Committee. And that is, we put light on things they want to keep in the shadow. That's what really gets their goat. They want you to not be aware of things that we bring up. We have supported everything they asked for, with the exception of the one, the library windows, there was a tie vote. But what they really get mad at is when we bring up points that they don't want to have talked about in public. You know, our democracy, is, and I don't mean just the town of Hampton, but just in general, is suffering greatly because of, of a variety of factors. I won't go into all of them, but the town of Hampton, just a few years ago, 10, 20 years ago, we used to have a Hampton Union and another newspaper as well. His name is Atlantic News, I think. Right? <coughs> but the Hampton Union had two full-time reporters covering the town back in those days. Now, we have one reporter who covers four towns. So we have basically 25% of a reporter, where we four, we had two. You take away the budget committee, you're restricting another source of inf information for you to have when you go and vote. And that will <laughs> definitely, you've already heard indications from others about their desire to further centralize power. Centralize it, centralize it, because in their mind, they're in a position to control that central point of power. You see, this is all about that game. It's a power game. And you, the voters, are the ones that are going to lose. My wife will be very happy, by the way, if you give her the budget committee. Because <laughs> she doesn't like all the time I spend on it. The truth is, the budget committee serves a real purpose, and that is to advise the voters. We have really very little power beyond that. Uh, we have a budget warrant article, which you saw earlier today. It has two numbers on it, one of which comes from the budget committee, the other one does not. So the budget committee is presently only producing half of a warrant article. That's how weak we are. Other than putting light on things that would otherwise remain in the shadow and coming up with a suggested budget number, which is half of the budget warrant article. That's all the power we have. We don't have anything else. We don't govern you. 
We don't tell you how to live your life like the Board of Selectmen does. They govern you. They're the governing body. You know, the planning board governs how you use your land. So they're governing your property. We don't govern you. We only advise you. We're not seeking power other than the power to advise you better. So it's really whether or not you want to have less information available, whether you want to be less powerful than you have been, or whether or not you want to uh, at least retain, if not enhance, the power that you have. I would suggest that it's better that you maintain power and make better use of it and vote no on this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Wolsey, I'm going to let you back. Um, I said a few moments ago that we would take a sense of the meeting after you spoke. This is your second bite at the apple, so I'd ask you to be brief, and then we're going to go out to the voters and see if we've heard enough pro and con on Article 41. I just want to remind the public, Mr. Moderator, that RSA 32 colon 16 mandates that the Budget Committee make the budget and that the Board of Selectmen are required to provide whatever information is necessary to do that. Uh, just about the time when Mr. Welch came on board, the Board of Selectmen was refusing to allow department heads to testify in front of the Budget Committee, and that, of course, is not legal. For the public, the default budget is a tool for you to use to compare. You have another option. Many times what the public t does when they go into the voting booth on the operating budget is vote for the lowest figure. If the selectman's presented figure that's gone through the budget committee is lower than the default budget, nine out of ten times probably the public will vote yes on the operating budget. If the default budget is lower, then they'll vote no on the proposed operating budget, knowing that the default budget will serve as a backup. In the 63 years we have had the uh, opportunity to have the Municipal Budget Committee serve this town, you have been very well served indeed. If you don't, if you wish to vote yes on this article, I suggest that you leave your home, get in your car, drive over to the town office, and throw your wallet in the front door. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. All right, let's go out and get a sense uh, from uh, those here. Um, we've uh, spent a little bit over half an hour on Article 41. We've heard both sides of the issue, and there may be more sides, but we've heard pro, we've heard con on Article 41. So my article, my question to you is, uh, if you want to, he um, if you uh, are ready to move on to Article 42, we're ready to cease discussion of Article 41, you'll raise your hands when I ask for a yes vote. If you want to keep talking about Article 41, you will vote no. So all those in favor of moving on to Article 42 and uh, terminating discussion on 41, raise your voter card. Down cards. All those opposed to terminating discussion on 41, we are going to move on to Article 42. And Article 41 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article 40. Well, as amended by, um, by uh, Mr. Nyan's amendment.